everyone! So this is the part 5 of my contouring series. And today I want to test some contouring techniques that I've seen on YouTube from professional and not professional makeup artists. I was just interested in what is the most common, like what do they do? First of all, I wanted to look on a picture of a skull. What is the cheekbone itself under all that skin, fat and muscles? So here it is. It is the bone. Under the bone is a hollow, right? So this hollow makes this shadow under your cheekbone. That makes our face lifted and slim. It's just a natural structure of a skull, basically. And the more the skull is shown through, the skinnier we look, right? Because if we look like a skeleton, literally we look like a skeleton. Another thing, let's talk about light and shadow again. It's important. The source of light can be in different places. It can be above, it can be on the right, on the left, on the back, everywhere. And so it creates different shadows. If the light is above, the shadows are below. So if the light is on the left, then all the shadows are on the right, so opposite. There can be wanted shadows or unwanted shadows. Unwanted shadows are puffiness, wrinkles, pimples, acne scars, large pores or anywhere where the surface is not flat, not tight. The shadows that make us look tired or sick or sad or they can be wanted shadows. Wanted shadows are the shadows under the cheekbones, straight shadows under your jaw, so the shadows that make our face slimmer and tighter. It looks healthier. So what does contouring supposed to do? It helps us to look slimmer, well rested and more healthy. It's like a bra for your cheekbones. Now, let's get to the contouring itself. And I watched loads of videos on YouTube paying attention on three most important things. Brushes, placement and application. So, today I will only talk about those. When I'm gonna correct different face shapes, it will be my next video. So, today I just wanted to see what are those basic techniques that people all over the world do to make contouring. You would just imagine I have most common oval face brushes. The brush should be middle size because the size of the shadow itself is about maybe half inch and then when we blend it, it becomes inch or something. So these ones are too big and too fluffy for contouring. What it would give us? It can give us big shadow on the face, but it will not be precise enough to lift the cheekbone or to show the structure of the face. Uh, to make it slimmer, it will just add huge shadow on the sides, which is useful, but it's not what we're doing when we contour. I will show you everything all myself. And let's say I take this fluffy brush, brown powder, take the excess off. Okay, let me try to do my cheekbone with this big fluffy brush, what I see. Okay, uh, the shadow is very soft and it really covers much of an area of my face. Uh, it is not precise enough to draw the shadow under the cheekbone. It is still can be used, I think, to darken the sides of your face. But let's try smaller brush. Yeah, the shadow is very precise. I will try to blend it up. It's hard to blend very carefully with this small brush. You lift the color up here and you don't lift it here enough and then lift it here. It becomes patchy. Let me try. Yeah, it's easier to blend with a bigger brush. There are loads of options now, uh, but most common brushes are this size and rounded, whether it's angled. Now let's go to the placement. Where is the cheekbone? We already know from my previous parts that uh, cheekbones can be prominent or not prominent. For those of you who have prominent cheekbones, that means you already have that natural shadow under your cheekbone. All you need to do is just turn on the light which is above your head and look in the mirror or make a picture. As soon as the light is falling from above on your cheekbone, then you will have that natural shadow under your cheekbone and all you will need is just to repeat this. But there are so many faces where the cheekbones are not prominent, so when people don't know where their cheekbones actually are. I'm one of those people, I have no idea, so I'm gonna find out now using three most common techniques that I found in those videos. Here's the moon face girl. 
Carla. Most common advice on fighting your cheekbones that I hear from YouTubers and from famous makeup artists is suck in your cheeks and follow the hollow. So let me suck in my cheek and follow the hollow. I think I have a beard. Maybe for most of you that would work. Second most popular technique is from the top of your ear to the corner of your mouth. You just make this line. From the top of my ear to the corner of my mouth. Looks more like a contour. When I looked at red carpet makeup pictures, I think most of their makeup artists use this technique. Probably it's the easiest thing because you don't have to suck in anything. Try and find the bone. The technique number three. So they're trying basically to find the bone under their skin, trying to fill it with their fingers. Or sometimes they say, take a brush and roll it down. It will fit right under your cheekbone and make the shadow right under the bone that I have under there. Let me just do it exactly where my bone is. So my bone starts here. And then it goes like this. This is my bone. I think I'll look a bit sick on that side because you know when we get swollen, then uh, we kind of have those parts pretty swollen. No, I would not do this. It's not a lifted effect at all. That's why celebrity makeup artists they choose this way of doing cheekbones. I think because it's maybe it fits most of the faces and it really corrects and just lifts the faces. Okay, now let's talk about the application. There are several ways to do it. The most important thing is to avoid patchiness. Very accurate blending. I'll tell you about the brush. The bristles in the middle are longer and then they gradually go down like this and on the sides they're this long. The bristles in the middle they're made to draw this line and the bristles around it blend this line to all the directions. You take some contouring powder, not too much. Take the excess off. Place the brush like this. Not like this, which is also appropriate, but it's another technique. You place the brush and you start doing circular motions up and down. What is this doing? It's helping us to keep this line darker and then it blends automatically at the same time with those shorter bristles. Another technique is to place the brush like this and then apply it and then blend it a little bit up and maybe a little bit down. So those are two techniques on how to apply it. You don't have to put a lot of product on your cheeks because people see the makeup itself. You know your face pretty well, so for you it might not be enough. You would want to add and add slim your face down to almost nothing. So people who talk to you they look on your whole face and the light parts draw their attention more than the darker parts. So if it's a bit darker, it's already enough. You want to make sure that the light is shining on your face. If it's a bit on the side, you won't make it equal from both sides. When I'm doing my everyday makeup, I use uh, this Inglot 505 contouring powder. It's for the lightest skin tones. And then I use even this big fluffy brush sometimes because I just do this very fast, like this. If you could write in the comments down below, what kind of contouring technique do you use? It will be very helpful information for me to prepare my next video, which will be about correcting different face shapes. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you all very soon. Goodbye!